So what's going on guys, Kate's here and welcome back to a brand new video. For today I will show you the top 7 most overpowered heroes in Jagan Hair Silent Gods. And just before we start, I want to clarify that yes, this video is sponsored, but I'm not getting paid for saying positive or negative things about the game. All that they said is just to give a try to this game and see if I like it. So Jagan Hair just launched globally and is now available on the PC through the Epic Game Store, Steam, Mac, iOS and Android. And if you want to try it out and join the new D&D Legends in Dragon Hair, then download the game right now using the link in the description. So, if this sounds interesting to you, then let's get right into it. So then moving over to the first most OP hero and it is the Acelia. She is a legendary hero with a Radiance element, mostly used as the defensive type, and her attack range is close melee. In Dragon Hair Silent Gods, Every hero brings a unique set of skills and abilities to the battle, and selecting the right hero for the right fight will be very crucial for your success, as you grow your team and progress your character. So that's why I picked Acelia, because she is a legendary hero that deals damage as a melee with massive defensive capabilities. On top of all of this, here are my top 8 ratings and activities that I use this hero on, and for each and every single one I rank the Acelia rating from 1 to 5 stars. So personally, for me, this hero was amazing at the Temporal Vortex, Arena, Grave of the Venom, Grave of the Curse, Grave of the Wrath and Heretical Ruins. Then as far as her skills go, her leader skill increases all allies resistance by 65 in Grand Gladiator Arena Battles. Then her passive skill for each debuff dispelled or resisted will gain 1 stack of Old Keeper's Glory, which can stack up to 10 stacks. Then her battle skill will heal all allies within a small range, so you want to keep other melee heroes close to the Acelia. And then finally for her ultimate, she will dispel all debuffs on all allies, granting them debuff immunity for 10 seconds, and casting another spell that will heal all allies in every 2.5 seconds, and this will last for over 5 seconds. Then for the second best hero we have the Gulende. Golende is a legendary hero that deals damage at range. His element is Necrosis and we mainly use him as a support type of hero. As you can see from our ratings, for the top 8 dungeons and areas, this hero has the best performance, which almost no other hero can do. This is definitely not a cheap hero to get, but he's definitely worth it at the endgame content. Then now let's look into the skills and his first leader skill increases all allies accuracy by 65 in Grand Gladiator Arena Battles. Then as for her passive skill, when we will cast a skill on the enemy with HP less than 50%, there is a 50% chance of inflicting Charmed and Healing Reduction for 5 seconds. If the hero fails to inflict Charmed on the enemy, they will inflict Accuracy Penalty 2 instead for the 5 seconds, which will do massive amounts of debuffs. Then his battle skill has a 100% chance of inflicting stunned effect on the enemy for 3 seconds. And for those next 3 seconds, we will deal necrotic damage on the enemy every 0.5 seconds, stealing 3% of their ultimate energy and healing the hero. And then finally for our ultimate skill we will deal necrotic damage to all enemies, with a 75% chance of inflicting attack penalty too, on them for 10 extra seconds, dispelling all debuffs from all allies and healing them, while as well gaining an increase in that healing for each debuff successfully dispelled. Then next up we have the Hivater, the Lady of the Gale. She is another amazing hero that has legendary rarity. Her element is Ice and her hero type is of course Frost, as she mainly uses attacks from the range. As far as her rating goes, she is amazing in all top 8 dungeons, because of how much damage she can do. And if you look into what enemies you come across, then you will notice that having a Frost damage healer is way too OP, because of how many enemies take more damage from the Ice element. So with that said, her leader skill increases all allies attack by 45% in Grand Gladiator Arena Battles. Then her passive skill changes the weather to the Ice Wind for 15 seconds as the battle starts. While Ice Wind is in effect and when the targets are inflicted with frost, it will additionally deal derivative cold damage over time to them. Enemies with a HP below 50% will be executed. Unfortunately for us, bosses are immune to the execution, but they will receive an additional derivative called damage, instead of the one-shot execution. Then her battle skill will unleash a frost breath, 
dealing cold damage to the enemies with range, even with a 75% chance to inflict frost for 5 seconds. And then lastly for her ultimate skill, she can change the weather to the ice wind for 15 seconds and deal cold damage to all enemies. Each enemy under frost in the battlefield will increase the damage by 15%. And then just before we continue, I wanna tell you guys about the new upcoming Dungeons and Dragons characters, a new cool event and much more. So Dungeons and Dragons is the world's most popular tabletop role-playing game and Dragon Hair is officially collaborating with them and by doing so, they're introducing new characters like the Jis Du Urten and Air 2 to the game on November 17. This collaboration, Jis and his Black Panther, the Gunavir, will have an independent and complete storyline. Players as well will be able to consume the Helia Light dice to participate in the Planeswalker summoning for a chance to summon the event's exclusive hero, the Jis Du Urten. Dice skins like D20 and D4 are also free to get as long as you complete the collaborated main quest and their connected activities. Players as well can go and defeat the final villain, boss Air 2 in multiple ways. Air 2 will be added to a new dungeon after the completion and you can unlock rewards by dealing big damage in the sandbox world. So what are you waiting for? Try the new D&D Legends in Dragon Hair and have fun! And then lastly I wanna quickly introduce you guys to the Bless Summons 1. So from the 6th of December till 12th, you will be able to summon heroes by using the Hail Light dice. And because of this event, you will be able to choose any 3 legendary heroes. In each summon you don't get one of these 3 heroes, their chances will keep getting increased. So this event is amazing if you want to get a specific powerful hero. Here you can as well see the heroes that you can summon. I personally will be going for the Premsa hero, because I really want to try out the Undead Puppet skill and because of our captain, which will increase our attack by 45%. Then as well some other good heroes is the Ghoul Ende, Garret, and from the epic heroes the Fichrach. So guys, don't forget to participate in this event. And on top of all of this, you can go to the official Dragonheart Facebook page and watch the new D&D event trailer. Then moving over to the fourth hero which is the Argander. He is a legendary hero with a poison element that mainly is used as a defensive hero, and his attack range is close melee as well. So with that said, Ergander ratings are 5 stars for most activities, except the Goblin Lair, where his performance is not as good as I expected, but in everything else, his performance is 5 out of 5 stars. So then for his leader skill it will increase all allies defense by 45% in the Grand Gladiator Arena Battles. Then his passive skill when taking damage has a 30% chance to inflict attack penalty too for 5 seconds on its attacker. Then his battle skill deals poison damage to the enemies within the range, with a very high percent chance of reducing their ultimate energy by 25% and then he will heal that hero. And finally for his ultimate, he has a 100% chance of taunting the enemies within range for 5 seconds, dealing poison damage. Meanwhile the hero will gain immortality for 10 seconds. Then for the next hero we have the Rahash, the Dark Fire. He's another legendary hero that uses fire element attacks and of course from long range. This hero is similar to the previous two damage heroes because of his insanely high ratings for all dungeons, except the Goblin Lair. And even in that one we still have 4 stars. So overall this hero is definitely worth its price. For his passives he will have a fire heart for 4 seconds upon an ally's wall check. Then the battle skill will while shoot an arrow at the enemy, dealing fire damage. The damage then spreads inflicting fire damage on other enemies within range. And then finally for the ultimate skill, this hero will shoot a wild shot, which is a powerful arrow at the enemy, dealing fire damage, and if the hero has the fire heart, when casting the skill, the skill damage is increased by 30%, and the hero's ultimate energy is increased by 20%. Then for one of the last heroes we have the one and only epic hero, which is very close to the legendary ones and it is the fur buff, the muddy demon. He's a poison element hero that is mainly used as defensive type and mostly he attacks in melee range. Then for his rating, he has the highest 5 out of 5 stars in the temporal vortex, grave of the venom, grave of curse, grave of wrath, vertical ruins and ancient battlefield. Then for the leader skill, he will increase all allies defense by 24% in dungeon battles. Then for the passive, when dealing damage to the enemies under debuffs, this hero will gain a 30% chance of healing the ally, with the lowest HP and dispelling one debuff. The more debuffs on the attacked enemy, 
The higher amount of healing you will get. Then the battle skill will generate a healing nexus around the hero for 6 seconds, healing allies within the range every 1 second. And then lastly for the ultimate skill he will deal poison damage to the enemies within range and as well with a 75% chance of inflicting attack penalty 2 for 10 seconds. And finally, for the last best hero we have the Nasienka. She brings a unique set of skills and abilities to the battle with her melee close range playstyle. She is a lightning element hero with dauntless type and a massive damage potential. She is the last hero with all 5 out of 5 star ratings for all top 8 activities. Then as for her leader skill, it will increase all allies attack by 30% in all battles. Then her passive skill will do that every 3 seconds the hero survives. It will gain 1 stack of black storks. Then the next passive will do that for every 3 seconds that you survive. It will gain 1 stack of the black stork feather that cannot be dispelled. In addition to these stacks, the hero will gain a crit rate boost based on the attack time. Then her battle skill will teleport her to the enemy with the lowest HP dealing lightning damage 3 times. This skill is counted as a basic attack and is guaranteed to be unleashed as the battle starts. And then finally for the ultimate skill, she will deal lightning damage to the enemies within range for the next 10 seconds. When all allies launch a basic attack, the hero as well has a 40% chance of shooting a feather to the target as a follow-up attack, dealing very high lightning damage. And that's about it. So with that said, I really do appreciate everyone for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any suggestions, feedback or other video ideas like hero guides or tutorials that you would like to see for the next video, then feel free to leave your comments in the comment section down below. I want to thank again this video sponsor, Jagan Hair Cell and Gods, and don't forget guys to click the link description box to download the game and play it for free. And as the game just released on Steam, so you can join hundreds of other thousand players in a new adventure and try out the new D&D Legends in Jagan Hair. And if you found this video helpful then please leave like, subscribe and enable that notification bell so this way you could support the channel and you wouldn't miss any more amazing content. With that said you have an amazing day and I will see you in my next video so take it easy, peace.